So the Acolyte episode three. Now, before we get started with this episode three review, I just want to thank all of you for the super nice supportive comments on my last video of the episode one and two of the Acolyte review. Man, those comments just really made my day. It made me just want to like keep making videos and push myself even further on this channel. So keep the support coming and I'm excited to hear what you have to say in the comments of this video. Now into the review, I'm going to keep this as short and as sweet as possible. One, because I'm a little late on it, and two, because I have very mixed emotions on this episode. So this episode, as you probably already know, is very divisive. Probably one of the most divisive things since The Last Jedi in the Star Wars fandom. Now, if you're keeping up, you know why. It is a multitude of things that I really don't care to get too deeply into but I'll just start by saying I can see why people are very upset. Now, one side of the fandom hates this, wants to burn it to the ground. The other, very small few, think this episode was really good and they enjoyed the new take on the Force. They enjoyed the twins' story. And I am, believe it or not, somewhere right in the middle. I neither hated nor loved this episode, which, if you weren't aware, is a take you're allowed to have because there are things that I enjoyed about this episode and things that I think should have just completely been left out, shouldn't have been allowed to be put in this show just for cringe factor and just overall how potentially devastating to some fans this new canon could have potentially been and is as we're seeing. So to start off with what I liked about the episode, I liked that we got a full episode backstory of the twins. Now, I've seen a lot of people saying that this should have been episode one, and I do partially agree with that. While I don't think this should have been the whole episode one, as it isn't really gripping and puts you into the current story, I think it should have been at least a quarter to half of the episode to set us up with their backstory. Instead of putting a whole episode of it after we've already established the current timeline and are wanting more of the current characters. Yes, I know we saw Soul and some other Jedi at younger ages, but we want to see what they're doing now. But like I said, this flashback was really cool. I'm glad we got their backstory and we got it fully fleshed out instead of just some crappy flashback scenes for maybe two minutes of screen time. It really got deep into their childhood, how they were raised, who they were raised by, and why they are the way that they are. And of course, we get into the fire, and it really shows that turning point in both the twins' lives, which is good character development. It really shows where they came from, why they are who they are now, and kind of gives us some stepping stones and a look into their life so we can better understand their characters and the current timeline moving forward throughout the next few episodes of this show. Now, another thing I liked, although the witches and their seances and ways they talked, interacted with each other, whatever, were a little bit cringe, I did like that we saw a different sect of witches in the Star Wars universe. Now, I don't agree with everything they did. Like I mentioned, I think it's just cool to expand to that magic lore that we have established, you know, with Mother Talzin, the Dathomirians, all that that was set up in the Clone Wars and we've kind of been seeing in the Ahsoka show. It's cool to know that there are other people out there who practice magic and have a different take on the Force and what it should be used for. And one last thing that stood out to me as a big like for this episode, personally, is how they went about the flashbacks. I really think they casted the child actor well for the twins. I don't know if there was any deep fake going on here, but they looked scarily similar to the current actress who plays May, So that was really cool. I liked how that was believable, kept the continuity intact. I also really like how they de-aged Soul. I don't know if they actually de-aged him again or if they used any deep fake at all, he, but he just looked a lot younger. Maybe it was just the haircut that aged him down by a few years, but I thought everything was very realistic. It reminds me of the Kenobi show when we got the flashback to Anakin and Obi-Wan. Uh, practice dueling with one another and it was blatantly obvious that it was current day Hayden Christensen and they did not at all try to deep fake him down to look like he did in that attack of the clones revenge of the sith era 
So it was cool to see that they really paid attention to detail on that. Again, a small like, but still something that caught my eye and impressed me about the episode. Now that we have the stuff I liked out of the way, let's get into the more controversial what I didn't like about this episode. And also, simultaneously, what I didn't think was wrong with this episode that a lot of people seem to be very up in arms about. So I'm just going to rip the band-aid off right off the bat. This does not destroy Anakin's story. This does not destroy his character arc. He's not pointless. If anything, it's more of a disservice to say his story is ruined and he's not as cool than whatever this episode did to his legacy or whatever the fans think this episode did to his legacy. Yes, did these witches make two twins out of the force? Of course. But just because they did this does not undermine Anakin. Anakin was just the first that we know of in the Star Wars universe to have been conceived this way through the Force. Now, adding to canon, adding to stories, we learn that there has been more created through the Force just like this. Now, the reason that this doesn't undermine Anakin's story is because this is obviously a thing that has happened and existed. And whatever, Anakin wasn't the first to be conceived through the Force. But you know what he was? He was the chosen one, and he fulfilled the prophecy of bringing balance to the Force. Now, as far as we know, we don't know the conclusion of Mei and her sister's story, but I don't think that they're going to do anything near the level of what Anakin or Darth Vader did. They're not stealing the Chosen One prophecy. They will not become the Chosen One. And if they do, that is when I will have a problem. But for now, they are just another pair of siblings that were conceived through the Force by witches. Nowhere near the timeline of Anakin Skywalker. They're not coming for his title. They're not bringing balance to the Force. If anything, I think both of these characters are going to be done by the end of this season. Gone, forgotten, and in the past. And who knows, maybe they tie this in somehow with how Anakin was conceived and give us hints to that. But as far as the narrative of this destroys Anakin's storyline, I heavily disagree. I'm not going to argue with anybody about this. Everybody's entitled to their own opinion, and I do, trust me, I do understand why some people think this. I am just looking at it in a different light. Moving on into the things I really didn't care for in this episode, they're very minor, but just took me out of it. One, the first one that comes to mind is that cringe witch's chant or song. It wasn't even a chant. They were basically singing. Man, that, that could have been left out. I know that's a nitpick, but man, what was that? That I visibly cringed. I get what they were doing. I thought the seance was cool. I liked how they were kind of being like baptized in the way of this witchcraft but man the the chant took me out of it the visuals were cool the smoke everybody in there you know black robes and stuff and i thought the concept of kind of like i said baptizing them into this witchcraft was very cool but man that chance gotta go i might even just skip that part if i ever rewatch this series again lastly kind of a lot of things clumped into one that i didn't really care for was kind of how that temple went down in the fire I know this is a lot of people's opinion as well, and I'm not going to be as nitpicky about it, but I mean, hearing other people's reactions, yeah, that fire caught <laughs> very quickly. It caught on what looked like to be super thick stone, which is just, I mean, you can make up reasonings for how it happened. Maybe it's flammable stone, maybe... The fire caught the wiring of the door first and then spread, but it spread a little too quick. I don't know if it's just because they were trying to fit that big finale in the last five, ten minutes of the episode or what, but it just happened very quick, like unrealistically quick. I get people's gripes about that, and I'm, again, not going to argue that because I didn't care for it either. I thought these, if you take that away, I thought the scene was pretty cool i like how it was basically just a massacre the two get separated soul saves may the storyline and story beats were cool it was just the visuals and the pace of how things were happening was slightly unrealistic which of course kind of took me out of it but at the end of the day i can look past it it's a very small nitpick and really not the end of the world but i would like to see them fix small issues like this moving forwards with star wars content but that is all I have to say about episode 3, 
overall, I don't know, it was just kind of an iffy episode. Moving past the fact that it's very divisive, the whole Anakin storyline, and kind of all the BS around this episode, it was just a meh episode, honestly. Like, it was a good flashback episode, gave us the history of the twins, how they were conceived, how they came to be where they are today, but nothing really was outstanding about this episode. It was definitely the weakest of the three so far. I'm still very interested in the story and what is to come. I know the viewership is probably going to decline and the hate is going to grow after this episode, but I'm still looking forward to episode four and then of course the four other episodes that follow that because I want to see where the storyline goes. I'm curious who this mysterious Sith is or dark side user. I don't know if we can call them a Sith quite yet. I love the character of Soul. I want to see more of the Jedi in the, in the High Republic era in live action. So even though this episode was kind of just a meh to me, I'm still looking forward for what is to come. If I had to give this episode a rating, I'd probably give it a 6.5 out of 10. Not bad, but nothing too crazy good about it either. But anyways, I am done talking. I want to know what you guys thought of episode 3 down in the comments below. I'm looking forward to reading those. Also, while you're at it, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.